Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave and this is my daily ruling. Today we're going to be talking about the main new mechanic in Ether Drift: start your engines, and speed. By the end of this video you should be able to answer any questions you're likely to see involving this new mechanic. Ready? Let's get started. Speed is a value that players can have. Players start the game with no speed and it stays that way until some rule or effect gives it to them. The most common way for this to happen is via the start your engines mechanic. But according to this rule, if you start with no speed and something tries to increase your speed by a certain amount, then your speed ends up going to that value. I couldn't think of a way to make this happen in a real game, but maybe someone in the comments section will be a little bit more creative. Anytime you control a permanent that has start your engines, if you don't have speed, you go to one speed. This is a state based action and it happens no matter how long you control that permanent, even if you just threaten something until end of turn, for example. Once you have speed, there is a triggered ability that increases your speed by one each turn when any of your opponents lose life. Because this ability triggers only once each turn and only triggers on your turns, that sets a natural progression for how fast you can accumulate speed. Unlike other mechanics that use counters to track progression, there's no way to change your speed outside of this specific framework, which is a little bit disappointing. Since the ability only triggers once per turn, it's not possible to have it trigger again with effects that cause abilities to trigger an additional time, but you can copy this ability with things that copy triggered abilities. Another interesting fact about how you accumulate speed is that the ability that increases your speed each turn is not part of the start your engines mechanic. It's entirely separate. Actually, it comes from the game itself rather than having any specific object as its source. Once you have speed, you don't need any speed cards in play for that ability to resolve or even trigger. So if you started with no speed and then played Outpace Oblivion and immediately sacrificed it, having its ability damage your opponent would promote you to two speed, even though Outpace Oblivion was not in play to see your opponent get damaged. In case you're wondering, going to one speed once you control a permanent with a speed, uh, start your engines is a state based action, which means it is not possible to sacrifice Outpace Oblivion before that happens. The purpose of having speed is that some effects care about how much speed you have. If you somehow come upon one of these effects when you don't have speed yet, then the game effect considers your speed to be zero. In contrast, the most amount of speed that you can have is four. This is called having max speed, and several of the speed cards have some extra ability that unlocks once you have max speed. Take this Murgander Raceway, for example. As long as you have four speed, it can tap for two mana. Or this Burnout Bastronaut. As long as you have four speed, it has double strike. In general, the text max speed ability means as long as your speed is 4, this object has ability. Now those of you with a rather advanced rules knowledge might have raised an eyebrow at that, especially if you're familiar with cards like this Goblin Surveyor. And if that's you, then well done. There actually is a technical problem that keeps this card from working as intended. The issue is that abilities of permanent cards only function while the object that has them is on the battlefield. There are some exceptions to this for abilities that are clearly intended to function in the graveyard, for example. Uh, this means that abilities like the one on this Maestro's Initiate can function properly. See, here's the exception. An ability whose cost specifies that it moves the object it's on out of a particular zone functions only in that zone. So Maestro's Initiate's ability functions in the graveyard just fine. Unfortunately, there's no exception for static abilities that grant other abilities to the object that they're on. If Goblin Surveyor had 3 exile this, draw a card, activate this ability only if you have max speed, well that would work just fine because it would have that ability all the time and it fits under that exception that allows it to work in the graveyard. But Goblin Surveyor's max speed ability does not work like that. It has an ability that gives Goblin Surveyor the ability to pay 3 and exile it to draw. While that activated ability functions in the graveyard, there's no mechanism allowing the static ability that grants it to do so. Wizards of the Coast is aware of this issue and has stated that the rules team is working on pushing an update that will fix it. In the meantime, they have advised that Goblin Surveyor's ability should be ruled as intended rather than as written. I've linked a tweet from Magic's Principal Rules Editor in the description. In the past, I've cautioned against such a philosophy of, we'll fix it, but in the meantime, here's what the answer is, on the basis that the fundamental case might have a relatively obvious intended ruling, but some other related ones might be less so. For example, if you exiled Howl Squad Heavy with Agatha's Soul Cauldron, could you tap your creatures with plus one plus one counters on them for a lot of mana? And according to the same source, the intended answer is no, because the max speed static ability is not giving Howl Squad Heavy an ability that functions in other zones. I'm extremely interested to see what they end up settling on, because there are a lot of non-obvious cases like this. 
For example, the lifelink ability is not covered under any of the exceptions that allow abilities to function off the battlefield. Rather, the game rules check to see if a source has lifelink to determine whether the damage dealt by that object will gain its controller life. So if you exiled a normal lifelink creature with selfless exorcist, the lifelink creature's controller would gain life. On the other hand, it's unclear whether the same would be true when exiling a streaking oil gorger. In the same way, I'd be very interested to know whether an Eater of Virtue that had exiled a Gastral Thrill Seeker would grant Death Touch, Haste, or both. And that's just about all of the rules that you would need for this mechanic, but there actually is one more aspect worth covering about speed, and that's policy. Let's say your opponent asks you how much speed you have. Do you have to answer? Well, the Magic Tournament rules categorize information into four types. Private, derived, free, and status. The rules around player communication depend on the class of information. If you'd like a fuller explanation, you can search for my video titled What Can I Say, which gives a deep dive into this topic. For now, let's simply concern ourselves with the question of what category a player's speed would fall into. Because of its similarity to other mechanics like energy or the ring tempts you and the city's blessing, it seems most natural to consider speed as free information. As a judge, this is how I would rule it personally, but I will say it's not very clear based on what's in the MTR. The MTR has a list of specific things that are specifically considered free information, and a player's speed value does not explicitly appear on that list. I think it's intended to fall under this category, which includes things like the city's blessing and being the monarch. Taking this for granted that this is the case, uh, then that would mean that players would need to communicate what their new speed is anytime that value changes. And speaking about changes, what would happen if a player damages an opponent but doesn't note their change in speed? In this case, the appropriate infraction is a missed trigger, since the thing that increases your speed is a triggered ability. At competitive rel, the opponent would likely be given the choice to either have that ability stay missed or put it on the stack, unless the ability was missed more than one turn ago. At regular rel, it's likely that the judge would just have the player go up by one speed at the point when this was noticed. Phew. Suitable for the speed mechanic, I feel like we started at one star and went all the way up to four stars with this one. Let's cool down with some challenge questions to test your understanding. First, what if Amy is at no speed and plays point the way, then sacrifices it at her first opportunity to do so? How many lands does she get? Well, recall that in contrast to the thing that increases your speed, which is a triggered ability, the thing that gives you your first speed is a state-based action. These happen after any spell resolves, before any player gets priority to cast spells or activate abilities. Therefore, even if Amy sacrifices this enchantment at her earliest opportunity, she still gets to search for one land. But what about if Amy has 4 speed and has her Risen Necro Regent trigger? In response to that trigger, Nick bounces something of Amy's with Spike Shell Harrier and reduces Amy's speed. What happens? Now for this one, let's remember that max speed ability means as long as you have 4 speed, this creature has ability. Therefore, once Risen Necro Regent's ability is triggered, it doesn't matter what your speed is. That ability exists independently of its source. If Necro Regent loses that ability later, no problem. Amy would still get a 2-2. The answer would be exactly the same if someone played a removal spell against the Risen Necro Regent instead. If you're experienced with this sort of question, it might have tripped you up a little bit, since a lot of the time this sort of ability would use an intervening if clause to check your speed, which would in fact stop the ability from resolving if you lost speed before that happened. And that's all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again next time for another daily ruling. Until then, I hope you have a great day.